morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle but what is in the world of the body what is in the world of biology standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system or it's a regenerating system it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and while some folks may call that healing renewing regenerating system a miracle it really is just the way the body works if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you've got questions about formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, something you may have read about, skin health questions, questions about our true skin health products, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you just want to contribute to the conversation, we'd love to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Try to call in early. So we can squeeze in as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also head over to my blog, criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the website and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business, make some money, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. And of course, if you're interested in checking out some super high-end, premium, active, very active skin health products, if you're not satisfied with your skincare products, if you don't believe skincare really works, you need to check out our Truth Skin Health products, especially our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm as well, all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you want one product, if you're looking for, and I get this question a lot, what's the one product that I should use? or one product I should buy, or the first product I should buy, you want to start off with our Truth Serum and then our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream and Truth Balm should follow that. Truth Serum first, Truth Retinol 5% Gel second, and then uh, Truth Balm and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about our products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are still talking about connective tissue. I hope nobody's getting sick of hearing about this, but if you can't have a health, pro in my opinion, you can't have a health program without really, not just addressing connective tissue, but really only addressing connective tissue in a way because connective tissue is the unifying element of all health issues, all chronic degenerative health issues, all of them. Now, we've been talking about uh, various subjects that relate to connective tissue, including heart disease and interstitial cystitis in the skin. And, and I'm not going to, uh, there's, I haven't, there's a lot more I want to say about the skin and connective tissue. Chronic assault over the course of time with sugar, uh, digestive toxicity, that is food toxins in combination with nutritional deficiencies lead to degeneration of the connective tissue. This leads to ultimately to a breakdown and irritation and inflammation. The body responds to this inflammation and irritation and degeneration of the connective tissue by fibrosis and mineralization, the deposition of calcium particularly, as well as the deposition of plaques that are laid down to protect the connective tissue. So the connective tissue breaks down first because of deficiency and because of toxicity, especially sugar. The relationship between sugar and connective tissue is such that sugar is the leading cause, the major cause of a breakdown in connective tissue in terms of what we put into the body. 
Yes, digestive toxins are a problem, but nothing beats sugar, especially in our culture today, because we eat so much of the stuff. And we eat so much of the stuff, sugar, I, I'm referring to sugar, we eat so much of it divorced from the nutrients that are needed for the body to metabolize the sugar. This leads to elevations in sugar, elevations in sugar in blood sugar levels that the body's just not used to. And then that sugar destroys connective tissue. The relationship between sugar and connective tissue is one of destruction. Sugar burns connective tissue. It's called glycation. The relationship between sugar and connective tissue is gly uh, one of glycation. That is destruction. Glycation is just a fancy way of saying sugar destruction. Digestive toxicity is also an element. When digestive toxins get into the blood, Ultimately, they will get dumped out into the connective tissue. The connective tissue, it has been said, is the great dumping ground of blood toxicity. The blood, tox the, the blood must remain clean, and over the course of time, as the blood becomes toxic from food toxins, those toxins end up getting dumped off in the connective tissue, among other places. So between digestive toxicity and sugar toxicity and nutritional deficiency, you get a breakdown of connective tissue. This leads to fibrosis and mineralization and plaques. This leads to sclerosis and hypoxia, low levels of, of oxygen. Sclerosis just means a hardening. That leads to more degeneration. This is where the vicious cycle of degenerative disease and aging begins. It especially, it's especially problematic in the heart, obviously, because the heart is so darn important. And your boneheaded medical professional will give you a statin drug. It is the stupidest idea in medicine, and that's saying something. To, to suppress cholesterol because your connective t because uh, the body is dumping off cholesterol in the connective tissue is idiotic, absolutely idiotic. It does not even pass a kindergarten's understanding a kindergartner's understanding of biochemistry. If your doctor is giving you a statin drug to suppress cholesterol production in the name of helping clear out your arteries, he is a boneheaded biochemist, or, or he's practicing boneheaded biochemistry. One of the m most dramatic cases of connective tissue degradation occurs in the feet. It's called plantar fasciitis. You have a band of connective tissue called the plantar fascia. We talked about the fascia in the past. We're going to talk a lot more about the fascia because it's probably the most important component of the connective tissue. You've got a, a band of connective tissue called the plantar fascia that runs from the sole of your heel or from the bottom of uh, the back of your heel or from your heel to the ball of your foot all along the sole. And it is one of the strongest bands or pieces of connective tissue in the body. It's, it's designed to keep the bones and the joints in the feet in position. But like all aspects of connective tissue, it's prone to degeneration under conditions of nutritional deficiency. It's even more prone because of all the action that the, the foot gets. So the plantar fascia, the plantar connective tissue, technically it's called the plantar, whatever, you just think of the connective tissue in the foot. It's prone to stretching and tearing and breakdown. And this occurs for the same reason that all connective tissue breaks down. Nutritional deficiency, nutritional deficiency, toxicity from sugar, and then um, uh, also lack of oxygen and inflammation. Bad living, basically. If you have flat feet, this could be even worse. And the pain is awful. It's especially bad first thing in the morning or after rest. And it's associated with heel spurs, by the way, which are also the manifestation of a connective tissue degenerative problem. Heel spurs and calcification, remember, are one of the ways the body protects itself. So if you're dealing with plantar fasciitis, you're dealing with broken down connective tissue. Likewise, if you've got constant sprains in the uh, ligaments of the feet, Constant ankle sprains. Lots of people get constant ankle sprains. Same with knee injuries. Same with chronic knee pain. Any kind of joint pain needs to be regarded as an issue with connective tissue. And this is all, by the way, secondary to glycation, elevated blood sugar. Diabetics are much more prone to foot problems. Diabetics are much more prone to leg problems. Generalized pain and sprains in the legs. And ultimately, diabetics are much more prone to amputations. Again, because of the relationship between glycation, that is sugar burning, and connective tissue. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on 
on the Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. And that is a heck of a website. Thank you to Peter in the U.K. for setting that up, benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and also our Blemish Repair Complex. I keep forgetting to talk about that. That's my new acne formulation. Also great for detox, made with lots of nutrition. There ain't no window dressing in my Blemish Repair Complex. Window dressing is a is a technique that formulators use to put a drop of this and a drop of that, and then go, go uh, uh, focus on the drop of this and drop of that in a marketing campaign. I don't play play that game. All my formulations are loaded and packed with active material. You shouldn't have to pay for window dressing. You shouldn't have to pay for fillers. You shouldn't have to pay for water or wax or anything your body or skin doesn't need or doesn't want. If you're dealing with acne, check out our Blemish Repair Complex. If you know somebody who's dealing with acne, check out our Blemish Repair Complex. Also, if you're interested in just detox, there's lots of N-acetylcysteine in my Blemish Repair Complex, as well as selenium, the B-complex, chromium, uh, and also our our proprietary estrogen for uh, helping the, the, the nutrients get into the cells. Estrogen is a penetration enhancer. It improves the ability of nutrients to get into the cell. Very high tech, very proprietary, and it's all uh, it's in our blemish repair complex along with selenium NAC, vitamin E, and the B complex, and other detoxification and anti acne nutrients. You could find out all about it at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Also, want to remind you to check out my friend Melissa Galladay's uh, phone call. She does every Tuesday. 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, I guess you could call it a, a phone webinar. Uh, Melissa takes questions and also discusses various subjects. Dial in at 408-638-0968. That's 408-638-0968. And then uh, you have to press 579-044-9276 to get uh, on the call. Okay, uh, got lines open, 844-236-6010 for you. We're talking connective tissue, plantar fasciitis, foot problems, neuropathies. These are all uh, maladies that tend to affect folks who have blood sugar problems, diabetics. And you don't have to be diagnosed to be a diabetic, to be dis glycemic. Diabetes is a, a, a it's just an official diagnosis, but you can have messed up blood sugar, dysglycemia, without being an officially diagnosed diabetic. This is what we say all the time. It's one of the major ideas of what I call the bright side philosophy. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. You go by your symptoms, not your diagnosis. I got a letter the other day from a gal who uh, whose hair is falling out, and she was she did her some research, and she discovered that she was dealing with uh, a disease called teleogenic effluvium, chronic teleogen effluvium. Chronic, that just means your hair is falling out. They give you these Latin diagnoses and they sound all freaky. Chronic teleogen effluvium. What the heck does that mean? It means your hair is falling out. If your hair is falling out, it means your body's falling apart. It means your body is under conditions of nutritional deficiency and it's probably dealing with uh, low levels of oxygen as well and probably chronic toxicity. Under these kinds of conditions, resources will be redirected away from the scalp towards the center of the body. This is why our hair falls out. It's a lack of nutrition to the scalp. Now, hormones are sometimes involved for sure. But for the most part, under conditions of deficiency and toxicity, the body will reroute resources to the center of the body and away from the nails and away from the hair or the scalp and away from the skin. This is one of the main, it may be the most important reason to apply topical vitamins to the skin, especially vitamin C and vitamin A. Under conditions of deficiency, those nutrients, the, the body's scarce nutrients, will be redirected away from the surface towards the center. The point I'm making is your diagnosis doesn't matter. You Go by your symptoms, and don't be bamboozled by Latin, Latin terminology. Doctors love Latin terminology that just means not means uh, it's just basically a description of what's happening in your body. Diabetes is just a term that we use to designate blood sugar that's not being controlled, and it's measured arbitrarily. So you have to have a specific score, and then you're a diabetic. But your body gets messed up before you get diagnosed. Diabetes is progressive. Diabetes or dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, starts to occur very early, way before you get diagnosed. If you have any problems with, with elevated blood sugar, if your body's not controlling the sugar, 
and your blood sugar levels are rising, the chances of connective tissue destruction increase because sugar burns connective tissue, glycates connective tissue. And connective tissue is not just about connecting, as we've said. Yes, there's all kinds of things that are involved with connective tissue, all kinds of uh, bodily breakdowns that are involved with connective tissue, from migraine headaches to interstitial cystitis, bladder infections and arthritis, you name it. However, connective tissue, that is uh, connective tissue that's messed up, inflamed, clogged, broken down, affects lots of other things, especially electricity. This is right in line. This idea of the electrical nature of the connective tissue is right in line with Eastern medicine, Indian medicine, Chinese medicine, which have been talking about the importance of electrical energy and electrical flow through the connective tissue for 5,000 years. Now, they didn't call it electrical flow through the connective tissue. They called it qi. And they didn't, uh, they didn't know that by holding the body in certain positions and, and holding the body in certain postures that electrical energy would be facilitated. But that's exactly what they were talking about. The connective tissue is not only about connecting. It doesn't only connect organs and structures and tissues in the body. And it doesn't only connect the cells. That's one of the coolest things about the connective tissue is every one of the 100 trillion cells in the body is woven together into a unified fabric, into a homogenous one piece via the connective tissue. And that's super cool. But the connective tissue is not just about connecting everything. It's about feeding. It's about oxygenating. It's about detoxification. Oxygenation nutrition and detox all pass through the connective tissue. So the connective tissue acts like the protector of the cell. It's the mother of the cell. It's the matrix of the cell. Matrix meaning mother or womb. When the connective tissue is clogged and damaged from food toxins and from sugar and when it doesn't get enough oxygen and when it's chronically, this occurs chronically, Inevitably, old age and disease will follow, or aging, I should say, and disease will follow. The connective tissue clogging, being clogged up blocks the nutrition, uh, blocks nutrition to the cells, blocks oxygenation to the cells, and blocks detoxification, leading to an accumulation of poison, and disease cannot help but follow. The connective tissue also is a conductor of electrical energy. The connective tissue is what electrifies the cells. And this electrification is what accounts for the seemingly mysterious benefits associated with acupuncture. The connective tissue gets electrified by movement. The electricity gets facilitated through the connective tissue by movement. And by the way, if you ever heard of the term redox, R-E-D-O-X, redox, what you're, what you're listening to or what you're hearing is the description of this electrical energy that flows through the connective tissue. Redox refers to the movement of electrical energy through the body. There's the, all of these supplements. I, there's actually a multi-level company or network marketing company that's selling redox supplements. Redox just refers to the movement of electrical energy. And it's a quantum phenomena, but you don't need to know that when it comes to redox, R-E-D-O-X. Redox is the push-pull phenomena that's associated with electrical energy as it flows through the connective tissue into the cells. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. And we'll get your calls here in just a moment. If you're on hold, that's 844-236-6010. And we do have lines open if you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, something you may have read about, heard about, formulations, ingredients, or if you just have a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. From... Uh, the FDA, this is from the FDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has suggested setting a limit on how much lead can be in cosmetics, ranging from lipstick and eyeshadow to blush and shampoo. How much lead? How about no lead? Why is this okay that we can put lead or uh, we can put lead on our skin or on our lips or in our hair, or for that matter, that we can put preservatives, cell-killing preservatives on our skin and on our hair and on our body? How did this ever become okay? Oh, well, because it's a very tiny amount of lead and it's a very tiny amount of preservative. Well, you know what? There is no good amount of topical lead to rub on your lips or on your hair or on your skin, and there's no good amount of... Uh, a cytotoxic, cell toxic, cell killing preservative to put on your hair or 
on your uh, skin or on your face or on your lips or anywhere on your body. This is one of the sneaky, insidious areas where we get exposed to toxicity and we don't even think about it. If we're like most people, we are rubbing on preservative and rubbing on toxic ingredients on our bodies every day, multiple times a day. If we're like most people, we're inhaling toxic perfumes and, and, and chemicals into our bodies every day. Do you ever walk into those uh, uh, body shop places where they have all the fragrant, all the shampoos and the fragrances? Do you know how toxic that is? I feel sorry for the people who have to work in those places, breathing in all that perfume and all those fragrances. They're awful awful toxic uh, stores even just walking down the the, uh, the the detergent aisle at your local grocery store is toxic if you can smell that stuff that is not good for you folks anyway fda limbs suggest limits on lead in cosmetics thank you fda from the journal gastroenterology ppis proton pump inhibitors that's like nexium and, and prilosec cut the risk of warfarin related bleeding upper GI bleeding. This is from the journal of the December issue of Gastroenterology. Now they want to give you a proton pump inhibitor if you are on Coumadin or Warfarin or a blood thinner because the PPIs cut the risk of uh, bleeding. That's because of how they suppress acid production in the, uh, in the GI, in the, in the digestive tract. It turns out that the risk of recurrent bleeding is higher and there's more complications, especially complications in the healing process when you have, uh, when you have uh, uh, peptic ulcers associated with uh, when you have an ulceration or acid, uh, acid environment associated with your Coumadin and with your Warfarin. So by suppressing acid, you suppress the likelihood of bleeding. This is the, this is the medical model. We got a problem with Warfarin causing GI bleeding. Let's give another drug to minimize the effects or to reduce the likelihood. Drugs to control the side effects of other drugs. This is how the medical model works. And if you understand the nature of pharmacology, you understand that you never want to use a prescription drug for a long period of time, ever. And if you have to take another prescription drug to reduce the side effects of the first prescription drug, folks, that's bad medicine. That's bad healing. That is not, th those are not good healing strategies to take a drug because you got it uh, to suppress the side effects that you're getting from the first drug or medical model at work. All right, 844-236-6010. Dave in South Carolina, good morning. Welcome to the Brights. Oh, Dave just went away. Sorry, Dave, call back, and I apologize. That's, that's my bad. Uh, call back, Dave. We'll get you right up. From the Journal of Clinical Nursing, December 16th, laughter is good medicine for nursing home residents. I love this. While prescription drugs and surgeries are the mainstays and radiation are the mainstays of the medical model, it turns out that laughter is good medicine and laughter is non-toxic and laughter has no side effects. From the Journal of Clinical Nursing, laughter therapy improves the quality of life of nursing home residents. Laughter, social relationships, deep breathing, hot tubs, exercise, these are all great strategies for dealing with disease, for dealing with chronic long-term breakdown of the body. And they're cheap, and they're free, and they don't have side effects. Dave in South Carolina, welcome back. Sorry about that, buddy. How you doing? Hey, Ben. How are you today, my friend? Good morning, sir. What's going on? All right. I've got a friend that just had, came, got very sick very quickly and when they went in they found out he had uh, i think necrosis of the liver they had to take part of his liver out oh my how yeah. old is he how yeah. old he's he's like late 40s oh he's been in great health but no uh, he couldn't have been in great if his liver's dying well, i mean that's interesting that you say because it, it appears like he it looked like he was in good health probably right it, it, exactly the the yeah. worst part of the problem now is when they inspected further they found that his gallbladder had fused to his intestines. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so they wanted yeah. to remove the gallbladder now, right? Uh, that, well, I think that was the plan, and they, it was so bad they couldn't do it. So what oh, could geez. you do for it? Lots you could do. He's got to immediately start controlling his diet. The, di the gallbladder is a digestive organ. It stores bile for uh, for uh, it stores bile for uh, processing of fats and and dietary and foods stuff that you eat. Uh, chances are pretty good that uh, that the liver issue and the gallbladder issue are related to a poor dietary strategies. And the fact that he was feeling okay 
just meant that he he got to perpetuate the bad the bad living that caused the problem. You follow me? So immediately he's got to work with food. Immediately, I'd be using digestive enzymes with all meals. I'd be using extra pancreatin with all his meals. Have him go get lecithin granules. Have him immediately do a food diet, or probably a swear OV cleanse for a couple of days, and then a food diary. This isn't the kind of thing that he's going to turn around right away, but he can begin mm -hmm. to turn around right away by, by focusing on problem foods and helping his body process foods. Also, less food. Caloric restriction is going to be in his interest, and any kind of nutrition he can get without requiring digestive processing is going to be in his interest, i.e. liquid nutrition, soups, chicken soup, bone soup, um, also smoothies. And by smoothies, I'm talking protein and egg and uh, ground up or blended in a, in a Vitamix or a blender. Uh, you can also use, of course, uh, your Beyond Tangy Tangerine and other powdered nu nutrients in smoothies. Uh, I'd also be using a little extra glutamine powder in a smoothie, vegetable juices, uh, nightly essence probiotics, you know, see how we're working here, focusing on food. Uh, after that, he's going to want to start working with blood sugar because sugar is a major reason for liver distress. Uh, I, I'm assuming he's not an alcoholic or anything like that because that'll really, com that'll really cause liver problems. And I'm assuming he's not on any, he will, has not been on any, on any long-term prescription drugs because that will also cause problems with the liver. So assuming those are good, make sure he's using uh, uh, anything he can do to help his body process sugar supplements for processing sugar, the B-complex, selenium, sulfur, the amino acid, taurine. Get him on the Bergamax. Go to brightsidehealth.com and get him some Bergamax or have him get some Bergamax. I haven't talked too much about Bergamax. It's very, very important. The flavonoids in Bergamot can be very important and helpful for folks dealing with liver issues. Remember, he's not alone here. 100 million Americans have liver problems. He's, so he's in good company. Uh, so uh, focus on food, focus on blood sugar metabolism, helping his body process, uh, process sugar. I would be using also extra liver nutrition in including glutamine powder, which he can put in his smoothie, also vitamin B12. He may want to get something called liver extract or gla liver glandulars. Sometimes that can be helpful. Hang on, I'll give you a couple more ideas when we come back from our breaks. Okay. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return with more of your phone calls right after this. Right side, got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We are talking to Dave in South Carolina. Dave, you there? Uh, yes, Dave? I am. Hey, Dave. So, uh, so uh, liver and gallbladder, number one, look at digestive health challenges, digestive health issues. Do a Swero V cleanse, half a bottle of Swero V every hour. This is for your friend. Half a bottle of Swero V every hour uh, for one or two days. He's going to feel better when he fasts, by the way. Uh, if he wants to do total fast, that's, that's good, too. That might even be better than a Swero V cleanse. But Swero V cleanse is good, too, because you get the electrolytes and the, uh, the bacteria from the fermented whey and a little bit of protein as well. Uh, then when he starts eating again, have him do a food diary where he's writing down everything he eats. Try to eat as little as possible. Use liquids and then uh, soups, smoothies, etc. Vegetable juices also. And then when he does eat solid food, make sure he's using his digestive enzymes, ultimate enzymes with his meals, a little apple cider vinegar with his ultimate enzymes. I would get some extra pancreatin, which is in the ultimate enzymes. I would get some extra bile salts. I would also be using lecithin with all meals. Lecithin is a precursor to bile. Uh, if he's going to, when he does eat foods, he may want to eat foods that contain cholesterol in them, uh, even though that's probably not what his doctor's telling him. Uh, the eggs, for example, organ meats, also good source of cholesterol. Why, the reason I say that is because cholesterol is a precursor to bile, uh, and, and you can't really control your blood cholesterol levels by eating cholesterol, maybe a little bit, because the body will adjust. It will make less cholesterol the more cholesterol you eat. So eating these kinds of foods with cholesterol in them will also give him precursors, including cholesterol, for making bile. 
Then also uh, essential fatty acids and fatty nutrients are very important. The chances are pretty good. He's deficient in fatty nutrients if he has a liver and gallbladder problem because he's not going to be able to access them from foods. So using essential fatty acid supplements, 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day, 400 IU of vitamin E a day. Make sure he's on selenium and zinc, both of which are, meta- are, are processed by the fatty system of the body. 600 micrograms of selenium a day, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day, uh, and then also probably some vitamin K, which he'll get from his cholesterol-containing foods, but I would throw in a little extra K2, maybe uh, something like uh, 1,000 to 2,000 micrograms of vitamin K2 every day, and then uh, vitamin D from the sun, and also from fish and from organ meats, and also from fish oil if he wants to go that way. Lots of things you could do, but focus on foods, and I, I didn't, I, I talked about blood sugar before we went to break. That's also very important. Uh, blood sugar issues are always, or are usually associated with liver problems as well. Hope that helps, Dave. Yeah, That's one a ton- last question. Yes, sir. Yeah, one last question. <clears throat> the biggest challenge I think we face, we've already got him on a few of those items already, but the biggest challenge is, of course, the push for the antibiotics, which we know are counterproductive. They're what very counterproductive. Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, they're terrible. They're terrible. You know, they're going to make things worse. Now, if he's infected, if there's infection, I don't know if there's infection there. You didn't mention that. But if there's infection, you may need an antibiotic. But it's not a good thing. So if there's not, if you can get away with it, if you can get away without an antibiotic, that's always best. And every doctor should know that at this point with, with all the problems we're having with antibiotic resistance, every doctor should recognize, and they don't, but you know, some of the clever ones do, that you only give an antibiotic when you have absolutely no other choice. Now, at this point in time. This is not the 1950s and 1960s when we can just willy-nilly pound everybody with antibiotics, or 1970s or 1980s or 1990s for that matter. Uh, in well, the year 2016, we got we got to be careful with antibiotics. Go ahead. Would a good option on the probiotic end to replace the antibiotics be the Bravo uh, probiotic? Uh, is that a longevity one? Uh, no, Bravo is the one with the, the, uh, the new uh, proteins that are uh, enzymes that are coming out that are uh, I haven't heard that of that. That was the what one you... factor well this is this is uh, it's something you ought to check into the uh, yeah. you, I'm sure you're familiar with the, with the strange deaths of some of the nutrition related uh, doctors uh, over the last year Is Bravo a brand all... name? Bravo's a brand name? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, it is, but it produces the M gaf or the M whatever the uh, the. Um, it's a peptide. Is it a peptide? A peptide that supports I, the gut? I believe it is. It's the one they were using to produce the the newest anti cancer uh, uh, therapy, and these these doctors that died mysteriously were all involved in this type of research. Oh, of you protocol. know, I did hear about that. I have heard about yeah. that. That's a protein for vitamin D, I believe. It involves okay. vitamin D. So, so Bravo, uh, it's a brand name, and I can't say I'm familiar with it, but if it does, uh, there are peptides uh, that help the body make other things, including uh, vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is, I don't think it helps you make vitamin D. I think it uh, helps the vitamin D work. And so, I w- you know, that's not a bad one. That, that's not a bad idea. I have to look more into that specifically. But any probiotic fermented food is going to support the gut, anything with bacteria. So that you want to look at gut health. And there's, by the way, there's a very important relationship that we've talked about here a little bit between good bacteria and bile and, the, uh, and between good bacteria and liver health and between good bacteria and fat metabolism, which is really where we're, we're concentrating with your friend here. So anything you could do to support the microbiome, that is the, the bacteria that live in the gut. And if it's Bravo, that's great. If it's fermented food, sauerkraut and, and miso and tempeh, that's great. If it's your nightly essence, that's also great. Don't forget about fiber because bacteria feed on the fiber. The ketogenic diet might be helpful for him. Uh, actually, you know what? I take that back. Scratch that because he's got uh, these fat problems. So you want to be a little bit easy on the amount of fat that he eats, but certainly fatty nutrients like, uh, like uh, essential fatty acids and fatty vitamins and minerals, that will help. I want to move on and get a couple more calls here, Dave. I hope I helped Thank you, buddy. Man. Yes, sir. Thank you. you God sure bless did. you, my Thank friend. You. Okay, take care. So uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go to Jennifer in Wisconsin. Good morning, Jennifer. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's going on? How can we help you? Well, I wanted to call you. Um, I was suffering. I'm 40 years old, and I suffered from uh, cystic acne. It got really bad. I suffered for about five years, and then I finally went to see a regular dermatologist, and of course... 
they put me on um, Accutane. Pharma's, uh, yeah, yeah. They no, actually, it's not Accutane. They put me no. on Atrolin gel for nighttime at the retinol. Um, okay. Of course, there's other garbage in it. Okay. And And uh, they put me on a Kanye gel in the morning. It's a benzoyl peroxide with a lot of other garbage. That in is it as well. that is that is stupid, <laughs> even for a dermatologist. By the way, to give a oh, topical. Oh, and they wanted to put me on an antibiotic as well. And I, I want you to go to that. That is the stupidest for cystic acne, which occurs deep in the skin. For a doctor yep. to give you can, uh, retinoic a, or retinoid and benzoyl peroxide is is idiotic with a capital I, even for a dermatologist. It, it's all about on the top end of idiocy, because your problem is not on the skin. It's it, it's cystic. It's deep. How the heck is benzoyl peroxide going to help you? Well, amazingly, my skin did clear up. Um, well, then I it did, wasn't I cystic. The antibiotic. Well, well hang on, hang on. on. Let's talk about this. If it's cystic, you're not your skin's not going to clear up with benzoyl peroxide. Did you do anything else, or was it cystic? I didn't. I so didn't. I didn't. The, be, I didn't. the benzoyl peroxide cleared up your cystic acne. The benzoyl peroxide did, not the Atrolin. No, no, I'm asking you. I, I don't know. I'm asking you. Are you saying I whatever honestly, it was? I honestly, Ben, don't know what did it. I can just tell you this. After they, I started taking their creams and using it, it was August 2014. So I've okay. been on this stuff for two and a half years. And now your skin looks it's, good. No more cystic it acne. It actually really does. Yeah. Okay, then does. there you go. Then you solve the problem. It, they, it's not cystic acne then because the cysts are not where the atrolin goes. The cysts are on the surface. Cysts are related to the body protecting itself from something. So listen to what I'm saying here. This is real important, Jennifer. The okay. cysts are a sign that the body is, is protecting itself. And by the way, all skin issues are the result of a, a protective response and an elimination response. So your body is toxic and it's trying to get rid of something and it's trying to protect itself from something. How atrolin gel and benzoyl peroxide could work for cystic acne, I have no idea. Congratulations. That's really awesome. I'm not sure why you're calling if it's if it's working, though. So something must be going on. I want to find a more natural alternative. I want to get off of that stuff because I don't like pharmaceutical drugs. I hate them with a passion. Well, well, I know they're well, bad. You, if it's working, you know, you got you got the solution to your problem. I don't know how it could work personally, and it seems silly to me that they would do that. I, this is what you need to do, okay? First of all, you got to more than likely have problems with your menstrual cycle, okay? I, I, you said you're 40. Uh, are you, you still have I'm men- 40. Okay, I'm cramping, pretty regular. Cramping, bloating, anything like that? Uh, no, surprisingly, I'm actually okay, so, pretty good. So here's, here's the deal, sweetheart, Jennifer. Um, you ever hear the saying where there's smoke, there's fire? Yeah. You know you know what that means, right? If you have smoke, you got fire. Cysts are smoke. You cannot have smoke without fire. So you have to have other problems going on in the body. You cannot just have cystic acne. You follow me, Jennifer? I do. Okay, I do. so you've got to figure out what else is going on in the body. With Cystic acne is not a problem. It's a sign of a problem. I mean, you may think right. it's a problem, but it's a symptom. It's not, a, it's not the problem itself. It's a symptom of a problem, and your job, if you really want to get off the meds is to figure out what is causing the problem. I don't know how you cannot have other health issues. I don't know how benzoyl peroxide and, and atrolin can work for a cystic problem. It doesn't make biochemical sense. It sounds, sounds to me like you're missing something. Oh, I, I don't, we're out of time, so I can't really help you right now, but if you want to send me an email, I'd love to talk to you. I really would. So if you send yeah. me an email, ben at ksco.com, put your phone number. I'll get back to you today or tomorrow. Do it, do it now, and I'll get back to you I right will. away, okay? Okay, because I want to talk to you. I'll send you one. Thanks, ben. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. Okay. Take care. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.